Hey guys, welcome back to Catfish Motorsports. Now, I don't really see myself as a product review channel, but when I see something that I think can help car guys, I wanna tell people about it. And I'm gonna show you why I think for less than $30, you need this little battery charger in your garage. Now this information here can be used by anybody who owns a car, but at the end, I'm gonna show you why as a hot rodder, I bought this, and if you're a hot rodder too, you might want this even more than the average person. Stick around. A few weeks ago, I did a different video that showed you how to charge a completely dead battery. So if you don't have one of these little chargers we're about to test, I'll put a link in the description and I'll put a little info button up here at the top. And you can watch that video. It'll either help you charge your really dead battery or it'll help you confirm that it's bad. Now I've got two batteries here. Both of these are various states of dead and both of them actually might be bad. This one I know is bad because when I did that other video, after I left it on the charger for about 30, 45 minutes charging, it actually tripped the bad battery function. Now, most chargers have that function that'll tell you if the battery you're charging is bad. It'll have an indicator light or it'll flash in a certain sequence of lights that'll tell you the battery's bad or you just say battery's bad or cables crossed, meaning you have the negative on the positive and vice versa. Here's the Cat's 22 about all that. That function will not trigger unless the battery is attempting to charge. Most common battery chargers will not charge a battery that is below something like 10 volts. So it actually needs to have most of its 12 volts before your average battery charger will work. That's what drew me to this little guy. This is a NOCO Genius One. They make several different models of this. This is the cheapest, smallest model. It's only a one amp charger. But NOCO says that this charger will charge a battery down to less than one volt. That's really impressive because like I said, most other chargers require you to have something like nine or 10 at least before they will try to charge. So just to recap here real quick, I'm gonna show you what happens when you put a battery that's discharged on your average battery charger. And I'm gonna show you real quick what both of these battery voltages are at. So we got my multimeter here. We've got it on 12 volts DC. We're gonna check the super start first. This is the battery that was originally out of my 67 Firebird when I first got it on the road in early 2017. This battery is showing about 9.9 .9 volts. Next, the Ford Motorcraft. And this is the one that I know is bad for my last test, even though I thought it was good at the end of the video. The Motorcraft is down to below five volts. It's 4.2 volts. Before we get started with the NOCO, I'm gonna show you some footage from my last video to show you what happens when you connect a really discharged battery onto your standard battery charger. All right, so this guy's still in the plastic, so we're gonna be discovering if this works together. Gotta to go get a knife. Because everything's a project. Kobe! I didn't do what I wanted it to at all. Look at that cute little guy. So the whole thing's pretty simple. So we've got a single mode button here and a few different lights for modes. We've got uh, standby mode, a regular 12 volt mode, an AGM mode, which would be like an Optima battery, which is what I have in my Firebird. I think Odyssey is also a common AGM battery setup. A lithium battery, which most of you aren't going to have, but they are becoming more popular, especially in racing. And then a six volt mode. Now, the magic is in a force mode. Not the force, but you know, force is enforcing it to do something. That is when you would have a battery below one volt and you put it into force mode and it will force it to charge, making it a dumb charger instead of a smart charger, which is actually a good thing in this case. That's the whole reason we wanted this. Now, because neither of these batteries are below one volt, in theory, they'll charge without us using that, or they'll at least try to charge and then tell us that they're bad. Let's give it a whirl. So we're connected. While we're connected and charging, I'm gonna peruse our little manual here. So as I'm reading through this, as you would expect, it has different kind of light pulsations 
uh, and different colors to tell you what's going on, whether it's charging normally, whether it's in maintenance mode, whether it's in standby mode, whether it's below one volt and you need to use the force mode, or if the battery's bad. So after a while, we'll just kind of see what this thing says. Now, because this is gonna take a while, I'm not gonna make you watch the whole thing. So we're just gonna come back and check on this in a little bit. We'll see what the first battery does. Then we'll switch it over to the second battery. And if either one of them seems like they actually charge, I'm gonna throw them in this dude right here and we'll give it a shot and see if they actually charge or not. Because both of these have been sitting in my corner for at least one year, if not two to three. So I had pretty much put these things out to pasture. They were just kind of waiting to be used as a core charge at some point. So it'd be really cool if one or both of these work. I think my best chance is that I might get one to work. I think the old Ford's dead. And there we have it, the bad battery light that we were expecting. So this indicates that there's either a suspected short or the battery won't hold a charge. It took quite a few hours to get there. I think it was probably on the charger for about eight hours in total, but get there on its own, it did. I didn't have to do any tricks to make the charger sense voltage or anything. We just put it on there, let it sit, and it did its thing. I'm gonna switch this over to the other battery. This one has a better chance of still being good. I doubt it, I think this one will probably be bad too, but it's got a better shot. And we'll come out and check it in the morning. Well, our superstar here has been on the charger for pretty much 24 hours. That is gonna kind of be the only big Achilles heel of a little one amp charger like this, is it's not gonna do anything quickly. It briefly gave us a green light. It's back to saying it's charging again now, which I guess a maintain function would do. I am skeptical, but we're gonna test it. We're gonna take this and throw it in my 62 cat right here and see if it cranks up. Now for quick reference, I do feel like this battery in particular was doing this exact same thing before when it failed in my Firebird originally. You would put it on the charger and charge it for a while. You put the multimeter on it, it would say it had 12 volts but then when you try to put it in the car and crank it, you get clicks. So that's kind of what I expect to happen right here. Let's give it a shot. And that's more or less what I was expecting. I'm not sure what the issue with that battery is. I suspect if we left it on this charger for long enough, it would trigger the same bad battery symbol that this motorcraft did. It's just failing in a different manner, so it's taking it longer to detect. I am gonna throw it back on there and just see what happens, because I'm curious. I'll leave it on for a few days. I don't think it's gonna magically heal it, but hey, you never know when it's not doing anything else. I might as well let it charge. But hey, so there you have it. This charger did what it's supposed to do. I know it's kind of anticlimactic for both of these batteries to be bad, but I always expect them to be bad. The big deal is, as opposed to my other charger and pretty much any other charger you're going to buy, it worked without any chicanery. I didn't have to trick it into sensing voltage. I was just able to put the charger on this battery, which was only reading four volts, and it charged to the point where it tested the battery as bad. Similar with this one, we didn't get the bad battery warning, but it tried to charge it even though it was below 10 volts, which we've shown with my bigger, more expensive battery charger, it won't. And that makes this little guy worth its $30 price. Let's talk about why I wanted this charger and why it's important if you were also a hot rodder like me. This is a Terminator X Holly fuel injection system. Why does that matter? These systems and systems like it are getting more and more common, whether it's FI Tech or Holly, the Sniper, etc., Aces Fuel Injection. Edelbrock Pro Flow. I bet a lot of you guys out there already have these installed into your car or you're thinking about it. If you have one of these systems connected and you're charging your battery on anything above, I believe it's two amp, you can and will burn up your ECU. If you don't believe me, watch the episode of Roadkill where Mike Finnegan and Tony Angelo win Drag Week and Finnegan's 55. They burned up his Terminator X ECU because they charged the battery on too high of an amperage with the battery connected. So there's evidence out there. You don't have to listen to me. That's an expensive mistake. That's a really expensive mistake. I think, uh, I think a replacement ECU is about $700. Now my battery charger has multifunctions. It has a two amp trickle charger, but that charger and other multifunction chargers I've used in the past, I don't know why, but it has a habit when you're sitting out here just having it in maintain mode of switching randomly up to 40 amps. When that's happened, I've managed to catch it before it did any damage. If you live in a wintry state, it's not uncommon for you to just have the maintainer on your car for days, weeks, months, while you can't drive it to make sure the battery stays good. And if you're not checking it religiously and it happens to switch over into that 40 amp mode, 
man, you might hurt something bad. So that is why I wanted a dedicated trickle charger that was only one amp max. So I know it's not gonna switch functions on me because it doesn't have any other functions to switch to. You may say, hey, my battery charger's never switched around me like that. But at the end of the day, this thing was $30. And we talked about how a new ECM would be like 700. So it seems like pretty cheap insurance to me. Now, one last note, the NOCO Genius comes in higher amperage units. Now, I explained in my hot rod section why I specifically wanted just the NOCO 1 that was only 1 amp, so it wouldn't hurt my aftermarket fuel injection system. But you may not have that requirement. For you, it may be worth buying the 5 or the 10, which charges faster and has more functions. Now, the NOCO 5 and 10 actually have a repair mode. I have no idea how well it works, if it works at all, or if it's just a gimmick. But what they say is that they can desulfate a battery. I don't think that's going to work on this guy, but I actually might buy a 5 or a 10 to test and report back to you guys. We'll put it on both of these batteries, which are bad. I think there's a chance that this one that's trying to work might be able to be brought back around. So that might be a reason for you to buy a NOCO 5 or 10 for that repair mode. And maybe you'll see it on a future episode with me. I might buy one and test it. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.